Hello, friends. Navinad. Nolan Holdem. I'm just going to bounce into this $3 poker tournament, I think. If there's anybody here. Is that... I thought there was somebody there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to win these things. And we're going to start with the Super Micro Stakes tournament, or, well, Heads Up Senko tournament, and just share a very basic strategy that ought to let you beat these super low stakes. Um, we could probably be at this uh, $3 level exploitive with our bet sizing. We have a big hand, we can raise bigger. And we have a weaker hand or implied odds type hand, we can bet smaller. Okay, so on paired boards like this, one little trick I found useful is to bet small so that we get called by ace highs, small pairs, 3x. Um, basically, keep a weak range in against us. And then bet bigger on the, well, on any non 3 turn. Okay, so, didn't, didn't go our way that time. We've got king high, I guess we've got some showdown value, but uh, pretty hard to realize it, so whatever. Next hand, usually though we bet small here, the turn card comes off, something other than a 3. We bet bigger, fold out all his 3x, baby pairs, and uh, ace highs. Okay, when we get limp 2, we can just play our hand for its strength. Our 9 3 offsuit is more than happy to just see a flop. Uh, we pick up nothing, but it's unlikely that our opponent hits this flop very hard, so we should be able to make a bet, get it through fairly often, and I think when the queen comes, it's a scare card to most of our opponent's calling range. Um, he's going to have a hard time calling up the six, may fold some tens, may fold some draws, and it can set us up to make a profitable river barrel also. Jack 5 offsuit we'll make a small raise with. Okay, we have a pair. Um, so if he checks to us, um, we probably don't want to bet because he's not going to call us with worse. He's not going to fold better, so we'd be kind of just wasting money. When he leads into us, a lot of times he's got a 5 himself. He's got a draw, he's got a 2. He's trying to pot control, uh, which is fine with us because we have this exact hand. If we had air, we could raise him. If we had a value hand, we could raise him. Um, but now we're getting 9 to 1. We usually beat at this point. Uh, but not always. And we've only got to be good 1 in 10 times to break. And we were good right up until this queen came. So you can at least see that in general, you know, the flop call was profitable. Flop turn was, or the uh, turn call was profitable. And, uh, yeah, so he banked the queen. What are you going to do? Uh, 10 9 suited. I think we can raise this up. We don't mind folding his equity out. If he let calls, we'll dominate some of his hands at 10 8, 9 8. Uh, not expecting a limp raise very often, but uh, something we'll take a note of. We're getting good pot odds, so we'll go ahead and call, try to pick up a piece. We don't, so we'll just check and fold. No big deal. You don't have to win every pot, you just have to win the last one. going kind of weird so far. This is definitely not your typical game flow. Okay, so now we have a better hand. We'll raise bigger. And uh, most guys at these levels are going to call just about as often, regardless of how big we bet. Um, now here we have three to the nut flush. We've got a gut shot to the nut straight. But if we bet here, nothing better is going to fold. Nothing worse is going to call. So by betting, we're just putting money into the pot when we're behind. Um, and we're not getting him to fold when we're... Yeah, he's not going to call when we're ahead. He's not going to fold when we're behind. So let's wait and see if we pick up something. Um, and otherwise, if he just checks again, we'll just try to get our hand to showdown. And if he bets, we can call with our ace high showdown value. Uh, you know, if he's got a draw or air. Uh... Our ace high will win, and even if he has a value hand, we've got uh, over cards, 
you know, three ace outs that could be good, and four jacks that are nut value um, outs. Um, now that he's uh, checked the turn, I feel pretty comfortable calling with our pair of aces. <laughs> okay, well, off to a rock and good start here. We'll get him. We'll raise because sometimes we'll just fold out his equity. And uh, if he calls, we'll still have the opportunity to see bet. And actually, yeah, we'll see by here. Uh, we have a pair. We've got three to a straight, three to a flush. We don't mind folding his over cards out. Really bad card, double barrel. Pretty much nothing that calls on the flop is going to fold on the turn. Or at least not often enough to make it profitable. And we're getting a huge price. So we'll just take the price, hope to bank five. And uh, back kind of on the big side because, again, I don't think he's going to be really, really uh, flexible. You know, he's either going to call or he's not. So we'll size our value bets big. And we'll size our bluffs like this, small. If he folds here, that's great. If he calls and folds to a C bet, that's great. Here we pick up bottom pair. Um, this board texture, it hits us pretty hard, so actually even though we've got showdown value and it's unlikely he's going to fold anything better or call with worse uh, on this street, I think we can get him to fold better hands by the river. And uh, I also think that it's, uh, it's a fine kind of a semi-bluff opportunity. We turned our hand into a five-out semi-bluff hoping to either uh, just take it down with another bet on another street, or improve with a three or a six, or you know get to the river against his diamond draws or other draws and have our hands hold up. Um, we're getting a billion to one, um, so we're gonna call and just hope to bank something. Um, and we didn't bank, but we did get into a situation where we can pretty credibly wrap a big hand and. We have to bet on the big side. But I think as long as he doesn't have an ace or a queen here, he should fold. So even though uh, we were betting in a situation where we're not definitely going to get a lot of immediate folds from better hands, we we're setting up a profitable situation because we have range advantage and we're able to leverage that range advantage and because our opponent's likely to make bets and calls and raises that broadcast where he's at in the hand, uh, we should be able to play pretty well against him on future streets. Okay, gut shot, straight draw, we'll just go ahead and put a bet in here, not to get check raised. If he calls, it's not the end of the world, if he folds, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, we'll just take a look at the flop here and see what's what. Um, this probably does hit his range pretty hard, and when he limps and we check back, we're going to have a ton of good hands on this flop, uh, because we'll be doing this with, like, you know, 8 and 9, which is at least, you know, got a pretty good chunk of equity. Um, a lot of, like, you know, 10, 9, even 10, 7, stuff like that will be in our range, so we don't have to worry about winning this pot with this hand, because when we get into this exact or similar situation, uh, we'll normally have something that can go to war with. Something that we can go to war with. And it's important to think about poker like that. It's not trying to win this hand. It's uh, not trying to... Like a player cannot exploit your exact hand. It can only exploit your range. Okay, so here's a spot where if I had air, I'd be tempted to just bet small. Um, but I've got an ace that's likely to be the best hand right now. Um, not a good card right there, but, uh, I mean, it improved our equity, but I don't think it's good enough to bat. We 
We had a lot of good things that could have happened. None of them did. Time to bail. Notice any uh, three or eight would have given us a straight, and an ace would have given us top pair, and a check would have given us the opportunity to win at showdown with ace high. So, kind of worst case scenario happened. Okay, here we are with no showdown value. Um, yeah, we've got no equity, no showdown value. It is a coordinated board that's pretty easy for him to hit, even though he did limp. He has been limping a lot, so I'm not going to read too much into that and just say we have nothing on a board that's pretty hard to have nothing on. And we'll just give it up. And that'll help us preserve our future fold equity because he sees that we're not bluffing all the time. Sometimes we're just going to check and fold. So we've got 8, 9, 10. We've got a pair of 5s. Um, we'll check. We'll be able to call a lot of turns. This is one of them. If he bets, we'll try to bluff catch. It's a big bet. I'm not super thrilled about it. Um, yeah, the check's kind of scary. If he bet again, it'd be... His story wouldn't add up that well. And calling with a 5 is like a hero call against the bluff heavy range would have made sense, but being that he has uh, been aggressive and checked on this uh, overcard, I think a lot of his range is going to be 8x and 9x uh, that isn't going to fold. And we're probably going to lose, but we do have some showdown value. There's the 9x again. Probably we would have just been wasting money trying to bluff against, like, well, I guess exactly the 8 could have folded. That's not enough combos of hands to make our our bluff profitable. Especially when we do have showdown value, like we had a pair of fives that if he had a hand that would fold to a bet, likely we had the best hand anyway. Okay, so here we are with top pair, top kicker. It's a draw heavy board, um, so we're not super thrilled about it. And we're likely at this point now that we've been raised, he's going to treat this as a bluff catcher. Hopefully he's on some kind of a flush draw or he's raising to protect a hand like King-10. Um, against draws, and uh, we're just going to hope, well, King Queen just got there, that's not real good for us, but he did limp, um, I'm really hoping it goes check check here, it's giving us a very good price, we're nearly at the top of our range as played, I think the only better hand we get to this spot with, the way we played the hand is probably going to be King Queen, so if we're not going to call here given these pot odds, then he can just take any two cards and take this line and beat us. So I think we've got to keep him honest, and once in a while he will have flopped the nuts. We played it kind of weird. Not too weird, I guess. No, played it pretty normal. 8-3 offsuit. Not, not a lot going on with that hand that makes it worth raising, especially when he's never folding. He just hasn't been folding to our open raises. So we can just wait till we make a hand that's got value and bet it. Uh, we'll bluff catch and hopefully it just doesn't just always have it. Okay, now we've got two pair we can bet for value. He'll call us with an ace. He'll call us with two worse pair. Maybe 10x. Jack 9 offsuit. Mm, with stack sizes as they are, I don't think we want to go three times the big blind. Now here... Got three to a straight. Um, when he donks into us here, he's usually asking the question, do I have the best hand? And we'll fold to a raise an awful lot. It's hard for him to hit this, um, but he might be doing this with like an ace. He could be doing this with a small pair. Um, every once in a while, a queen with a weak kicker might do this. Um, yeah, I think we do better to either induce a bluff on the river, control the pot for the times when we're beat, or do say uh, a thin value bet that we actually beat. Um, this small sizing tells me he's probably not bluffing, but he is betting thin with something like, I don't know, pocket sixes. And we'll just call it. Ha happy to just keep the pot small. Yeah, so we might have gotten about what we were going to get. I don't think he was calling a raise of King High. So happy. I'm, I'm, so I'm happy to just pick up that pot. Okay, 9, 10, queen. Um, if this was a heart, I would probably start betting to create some fold equity on future streets, but, um, yeah, I just, 
this is a board that does connect with a lot of hands and he's not showing a real fondness of hitting the fold button so we're not gonna we're gonna kind of under bluff meaning we're not gonna bluff a game theory optimal percent we're gonna bluff you know slightly less than that um, now here we've got two blank four five six blank eight so this is a good spot to check and call, check and raise, um, do a lot of things other than fold. Against this particular player, I think we want to check and call. Uh, we should have a lot of implied odds when we hit a 4, a 6, a 7, or a 3. And we definitely have a good price here. We have just plenty of direct pot odds. We're getting 5 to 1. We don't need nearly 5 to 1 to call. Um, so we'll just take the price. Um, we missed everything somehow again. Hope he just checks back and our sixes just win it. Um, yeah, that's I don't know, kind of weird that he would do this. Take this line if he does have a five. Should have some busted draws, maybe some air. It's giving us a pretty good price. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's uh let's see what he's got here. Yeah, and if, especially if he's capable of betting like a pair of twos there, it makes that uh, a very easy bluff catch because we're actually beating some of the hands he's betting apparently for value. And if we're ever beating some of the hands that he's betting for value, and he's ever bluffing and we're getting pot odds, it's a slam dunk of a call. Um here we pick up second pair. Uh, it's a discombobulated board, pretty hard for him to hit, so we will call. Um, usually this would be a very safe turn card because he wouldn't, we wouldn't expect him to bet uh, a three, but because we have seen him take similar lines, and um, it's going to be hard for us to call again on the river, and I don't know if he's just going to bet here instead. Man, but he's given us such a good price. You know what, I guess, I guess we're going to take the price and hope to bank a 6 or a 7, or for the river to brick off and to check and us to check him in that showdown. Um, and also I think we've got good implied odds if he does have a hand, but if he bets here we can just move all in and get called by like a 7, I'm sorry, a uh, queen, or like some kind of weird pocket pair. He might get sticky with even an ace. He folded that, did he? Hmm. That is shocking. It's a good fold. So here we have a gut shot um, that we can call. Uh, then we can maybe look for a, a spot to bluff in the future, or try to just bank, hope to, hope to bank, I should say, and. Sometimes he'll just check back and we'll run it showdown. If he bets here, I'm going to be pretty not thrilled about it. But if it's small enough, we'll call it. Yeah, we'll call that. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's making a lot of bet sizing mistakes that are just not putting enough pressure on our showdown value to get us to fold. Not giving us a bad enough price to fold our draws. And he's just, you know, he's not partitioning his ranges very intelligently. Um, pocket sevens on a paired board are usually going to be the best hand, and he has shown a willingness to just barrel away with like a pair of twos, a pair of sixes, any hand he thinks might be best, he might bet. Uh, once he checks here, um, I'm kind of not sure what to make of that. It could be a nine that just improved to showdown value that he's planning on bluff catching with, that might be giving him a bit too much credit. Um, he could have some slow plays too, he could be checking a king here. I think I'm happy to check it back and just hope to win. Yeah, I mean, I doubt he's going to pay us off with a jack high, so if we bet, we either just get a fold and we win no extra money or he raises us and we have to fold, so pretty happy with the way I played that hand. 7-5 offsuit is worth a raise, heads up, we've got the button. We want to make the pots bigger when we're in position. 
Okay, I like betting small on paired boards. Hoping he peels with over cards. Um, and like ace high. We pick up equity now and make a bigger bet. Hope he folds his ace highs and his over card floats. Maybe his baby pairs. Or we bank either a 5, 6, or 7 on the river to have some kind of showdown value. And we're really hoping he doesn't do that. But, I mean, again, he's betting 150 into 568. So we've got to call 150 to win 718. We just don't have to win very often to make this a profitable call. I'm not expecting to have the best hand that often, but I'm expecting to have the best hand more than enough to make that call. So we don't have to win that particular hand, which we did. We just have to win some of the time when he bets that small. Um, because when we win, we win the entire pot, and when we lose, we only lose the size of his bet. So that's the uh, concept of pot odds. Um, another gut shot. I, I like the idea of checking to him because his bet size is so terrible. Um, once he checks back, let's just go ahead and bomb this turn. See if he can hit the fold button sometimes. He's not good at it. But we've got a gut shot. Uh, he capped his range. When he checks back, he shouldn't have any jacks. Um, he could have a 6, though. Definitely could have a 6. Um, he has been betting all of his somethings. Yeah, you know what? This uh, I think he's rather polarized, meaning he's either got a really strong hand or nothing at all. So if that's the case, then ripping it in should cause him to fold a lot. And if he does have the top of his range, like a 6, oh shit. Yeah, he had the dead nuts, okay, pretty much, he had the effective nuts. And that happens. But against most of his range, he's going to fold a lot of it when we rip it in there. And even the hands that he calls with, he usually will have equity against. Um, I mean, at least our gut shot outs, you know, to give us a straight are going to be good the majority of the time. So there was a lot of, again, a lot of things that could could have gone well. I just didn't. Okay, I don't want to check and fold. I don't want to check and call. I don't want to check and raise. And I kind of leaves just betting. And I think I want to bet flop, bet turn, bet river here because um, a lot of the hands that you can call with on the flop, you can no longer call with. We did pick up showdown value in the form of a pair. But I still think it's better just to go ahead and put him to the test. See if we can get him to fold a 5, uh, an 8, occasionally a jack, although I wouldn't expect him to fold a jack. And if we check and he bets, it's going to be hard for us to call with our pair, and he may cause us to fold the best hand, which is never fun. Now he's got just over 10 bigs, and if he had some kind of clue as to what he was doing, he could have just shoved on us with a pretty wide range, but I'm not expecting him to do that, so I'm not particularly worried about it. Um, we'll just stab half pot here, and we'll just continue on you know, good cards. Like the pair of sevens, I mean, he, I'm guessing he's going to raise some of the time with a five. Um, he's going to lead some of the time with like a straight or a five, so I think I'm ahead of his range. Not by a lot. We want to that small and be willing to fold. Now we've got pretty much the nuts. The only hand that beats us is a pair of fives, and I don't think he's got a pair of fives, so I think we just snap it off and win the tournament against his air. And there you have it. Um, so, of course, it's going to be more difficult as you move up uh, to... Uh, and, and NL5 really doesn't play that much different. Um, NL10 gets a little bit tougher. Uh, NL20, of course, is where some of the players actually end up being pretty good, um, and I've played a little NL50 heads up, and the players are pretty good at that level, moreover, not all of them, of course, but uh, yeah, definitely, for beginners, I would recommend staying around the $3 level, $5 level, just kind of while you get an idea of what you're doing, and move up when you're, you know, winning a considerable percent of the time. Um, uh, I guess that's it, though. Um, hopefully you picked up something. And uh, if you've got questions, comments, uh, suggestions for future videos, post them for me. Love to hear back from you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, I have plenty of... Uh, how do I say this? I, I've got plenty of uh, 
flexibility open. I'm willing to listen to your input and make videos based on what you'd like to see. Um, so let me know if there's anything you'd like to see a video on, any concepts, any uh, even formats. I mean, I play a little bit of everything, um, specializing in heads up, but you know, it's not the only thing I play. Uh, so until next time, guys, good luck.